Basketball looks to bounce back after a two-point loss against Northern Kentucky. Football looks to bounce back against Kent State. And volleyball looks to win the MAC tournament over the weekend. This is Cardinal Sports Live. Good evening and welcome to this edition of Cardinal Sports Live, joined as always by analyst Hunter Skillman and today joined by guest analyst Augie Weezy. Augie, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, appreciate All it. All right, time to get into this action-packed show tonight, so let's start out. We start tonight's show talking some women's volleyball. The Cardinals have had great success this season, mustering a 17-11 record. Guys, talk about the success that we have seen from the Ball State women's volleyball, not only uh, this year, but over the past few seasons? Um, overall, 23 conference wins the past two years, uh, no less than 11 uh, conference wins throughout the time. They've won the MAC three years since Coach Phillips has been here, all three years since she's been here. And it really, uh, overall, it just speaks to how they've reloaded, not only recruiting, but how they've gotten newer players that maybe haven't played as much the year before up to speed. So it really just shows to how they reload each and, each and every year. One thing that really stands out to me is if you look at Coach Phillips' success here, She's had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Mac West titles after finishing runner-up her first season with the team. She's apparently also a fantastic mentor off the court as well because, I don't know if you guys know this, but the women's volleyball team actually had the best cumulative GPA in all of the athletics department as they cranked out a 3.67 GPA last year. That's, I can't imagine being a student athlete and keeping a, that good of a GPA. That's, that's really hard work from this team. Right, and on Tuesday, Sydney Van Beek and Coach Phillips talked about the success this season and the MAC tournament as well as team chemistry. To come out with a MAC West co-title, I mean, it feels really good. I know um, we've been hot here at the end, and um, it's a lot of hard work, but really proud of, of the girls and how hard they've fought. We have done a lot of different things offensively. We've played several different lineups. Um, I don't really think we've started how we finished. Um, and that's kind of been a strength of ours. We have a lot of versatility, a lot of depth. We just are ready to go into tournament with high hopes. And we're just feeling like everything is finally clicking. So at the beginning of the year, we kind of were trying to figure things out. And now we're just starting to get used to everyone. We like what we're doing. And um, all the confidence is all we need. When people are working together and we all have one goal together, that's what we're, we're working toward. We're working toward a MAC championship. And when everyone's working together, things are clicking, we're on the right track. We knew it was going to take some time to figure out all the moving parts and, and get the pieces to, to fit together and better late than never. Um, you know, and I think the strength of our team is their willingness to just compete in whatever fashion and whatever positions that our staff puts them out there with. And um, we've just found ways to compete, put it together, and I think that's what's allowed us to be successful here down the stretch um, and hopefully can continue into the tournament. On any given day, people are ready to fight, and whoever shows up and is willing to work the hardest are the ones that are going to take the game. And um, the MAC is kind of all up in the air. You never know who's going to take home wins, and it just depends on who, who shows up to play that day. I'm lucky to be able to go to the MAC tournament all four years, and. I'm just going to play with so much heart and confidence and um, just help lead my team to, in the right direction. And senior Sydney Van Beek will look to lead that team as the postseason starts tomorrow for Ball State when they face Ohio. Guys, talk about how important riding a six-game win streak is heading into a tournament like the Mid-American Conference. Oh, it's absolutely huge because you found an identity or at least as close to one as you like going into a tournament of this nature um, by beating some of these teams, albeit most of them are lower teams, lower you know, of the pack teams outside of Central Michigan. But I think it's huge. And then obviously coming off of a tough battle against Central Michigan, winning that, becoming co-champions with them of the West, I think that's absolutely huge, propelling yourself into you know, tournament play, so to speak. And then it's just bigger for the, it's also big for the younger players just to figure out ways how to not only gel with the older players and the team in general, not just the younger players, 
but uh, just to come up to speed with conference play in general. One thing that stands out here, like we previously mentioned, these guys are coming in on a six-game win streak, and you don't really have to look too far back to see several examples of a hot team just winning because of how hot they are. If you look at the Nationals in the World Series, they just steamrolled everybody, and they used that momentum, and they beat the Astros, which they probably shouldn't have beat. You can also look last year at the MAC tournament. Eastern Michigan won after just riding their like win streak in and just cranking it out. And, you know, it's all about riding that momentum. All right, with that being said, guys, what is your outlook for the MAC tournament for this team coming up starting tomorrow against Ohio? Well, I can easily see us beating Ohio tomorrow, and then comes the challenge of trying to take out Miami of Ohio on the road, well, on a neutral territory. And I can see us doing this because the way that we play in neutral territory, we're really good. We're 2-2 two and two this year, but we had a couple losses to Cincinnati and Notre Dame. But if you look back last year, we were 8-2 and two in neutral territory. So I can expect this team to do really well playing them in a neutral spot. Oh, I expect them to make the championship, I think, after, especially after running a six-game winning streak and beating the top dog in your side of the division in Central Michigan. I think uh, Miami will pose, obviously, a formidable test, but I think just the momentum and the six-game winning streak they have, I think they've gelled at the right time. I think this is their time to take the championship. All right, and we'll find out how they do tomorrow at 4.30 is when they will face Ohio. Time to take our first time out on the night. On the other side, we will discuss men's and women's basketball. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Cardinal Sports Live. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision... Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. When I first saw a Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet. And this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's gonna be cool. When I retired from the Navy, I found myself in a void in my life that had been filled by the people that I served with. Tommy really brought an important factor to my life. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Welcome back to Cardinal Sports Live. I'm your host, Grant Kobe, joined by Hunter Skillman and Augie Weezy tonight. Time to talk some hoops, starting with the men's basketball team. The Cardinals are off to a relatively hot start. Three wins, two losses on the season. Guys, how does early uh, success in the season help a, a team down in, in later in the season? Well, early success is really big, especially I'm going to be on this like a drum tonight, but uh, especially for a, a younger team, just because it really does help you just especially for the younger players, it helps you, you know, find out how to win ways at a higher level, at a collegiate level, some of these guys, you know. Um, and then it also just helps you, you know, find out like an early identity of your team, stuff you, you may be good at, stuff, you know, you may need to work on later in the year, things of that nature. Obviously, winning early is a good thing because you won't have to win as many games in the MAC. And as we know, when each individual game can determine your seating in the MAC tournament, teams really start to get into it. Another thing is, is with the two veterans from last year stepping out, and Trey Moses and Taylor Persons, it's really nice to see uh, Tajay and a couple other players really stepping up early to show that they like really want to be the leaders here instead of saying, no, you do it, no, you do it. So it's really good to see leadership stepping up now, and hopefully we'll see it all season. 
Right, and one of the players that has stood out so far this season is Tajay Teague. Guys, talk about what Teague has done for the team so far this season. Oh, he's been on an absolute tear, especially down low in the paint this year. He's a guy that can slash. He's a guy that can bang it down that low with the best of them. He's almost averaging a double-double the past three games, and he has a pair of 20-point games alongside of that. And then it's his success, especially down low, is huge because it opens up some of our perimeter shooters, and open, it opens us up for more three-point shots throughout the game. Tajay doing this well doesn't really surprise me at all. As you guys may know, Tajay actually has two relatives that are NBA players. Marquise Teague was a former first-round pick, as well as Jeff Teague, who used to play for the Pacers. So you could say basketball runs in his blood. So far this season, Tajay is leading the team in rebounds, blocks, steals, and points. All of this in uh, thought. He's also making 57% of his shots before the Northern Kentucky game. All right, and the senior will look to continue his success throughout the season. Here's what Coach Whitford had to say after the game last night against Northern Kentucky. Really, I told our guys in the locker room, you know, no one, didn't want anyone hanging their head. I thought we fought our tail off. I thought they fought their tail off. And I thought it was a really intense uh, game. You know, felt like a really high level mat game out there with how hard both teams were playing. And, uh, and I thought I thought we did a lot of good things, man. You know, we played well enough to win the game. You know, the thing that we couldn't overcome was the free throw shooting. I mean, it wasn't like we were 60% from the line. I mean, you know, it was so overwhelming. Our our inability to come away with points when it got to the line, and it's not like they're I mean, they're a good team. You know, we knew that, and and it became too much because because of that. But I thought we did a lot of good things, man. I thought our team really fought. I thought we stayed together. I thought we defended. I thought at the beginning we were a little, you know, iffy out there with, with a few decisions, but it wasn't lack of effort, wasn't lack of concentration. It's just a very different style. I don't have any, you know, I can't explain the, free, the three point shooting in the first half and the second half. You know, I think sometimes we've tried to address this going inside earlier. You know, I thought in a couple games early, we, you know, we were. We try to. We want to play inside out. I, mean, I thought a couple games early we were shooting, but I'll have to watch the film. But I didn't feel like we shot on poorly. It's really hard for me to explain because we're we're like last in the country in three point shooting in the first half, and we're legitimately. I mean, what were we tonight? Four for nine. I mean, we're first in the country in the second half. The same team. You know, we're shooting 50 percent from the three point line in the second half, which is bizarre, and we're shooting five percent in the first half. I can't really explain it. We went to Evansville. We were 6 for 15 from the free throw line, and tonight we were 9 for 26 from the free throw line. If we make free throws in both of those games, we could be sitting here 5-0 right now. You know, it's not like we shot, you know, 60%, which is terrible. And we're shooting in both of those games 40% or less, you know, 40 and 35 Guys, talk about the depth of the team this season. Coach Whitford has really used his bench uh, through most games this season. Talk about how that can affect, you know, fatigue and stuff throughout the game. I think depth is important, first of all, uh, just injury-wise. We saw Bracken Hazen, how that affected us negatively last year, how we couldn't really have a guy that could fill his role as viably as we wanted to. And then, if obviously, as you said, if we get in foul trouble later in the game, it's good to have a guy that can replace him, uh, that has same or similar skill sets than him, and as a guy that you know, if, you know, for example, if like Bracken goes in foul trouble, we can you know we can pull somebody off the bench. And last year, you know, we didn't have that much depth at that position, so it just really adds to the skill set of people that like our reserves. This year, we, we've been playing Bracken off the bench a little bit, and him and Luke Bumbleau are going to be really big names all season unless they sneak into the starting lineup, and then somebody on the starting lineup is going to make our bench a whole lot better. But the point of this is, is having two guys that can come off the bench and shoot threes really well is good for any team at any level because if you can put the three in, you're scoring more points than you would if you're trying to take it inside. As we've seen, the NBA is transitioning, and college is also transitioning into the three-point game. And before last night's game, Bumbleo was shooting 50% from behind the arc. He had a rough game last night and shot 0 for 5, and we really missed it as we lost by two. Right, and now transitioning into some women's basketball, the Cardinals are 2-2 two and two on the young season. One of the stands out so far has been Anna Clefane. Talked about the contributions she has made to the team so far this season. 
one thing that really stands out is last year she looked like she was going to be a lock for the all Mac freshman team. But 11 minutes into the Vanderbilt game, she went down with a torn ACL. And as all of us have seen, a lot of genetic freaks in the NBA can go down with an ACL and never look the same afterward. So for her to fight and claw and come back and be looking this good this early in the season is great to see for this young Cardinals team. Uh, yeah, she's been really solid. Uh, it's really impressive how she's came back from an ACL tear. Obviously, that's not, that's not an e easy injury to come back from. Um, and uh, especially coming off an of injury, as I said, uh, she's averaging 11.8 points a game so far and two assists with three rebounds. So pretty solid stats for somebody, again, coming back from that severe of an injury. So she's making her presence known right off the bat. So that's, that's a great addition, a great welcome addition to the team. Definitely. Here's what co head coach Brady Salee had to say about the season so far. led to some fast break points and some aggressive offense that uh, was started with rebounds. And that's what we've been talking about. It's, it's what we try to do um, is establish ourselves defensively, uh, follow a plan, and then let our rebounding take over and turn that into some good offense today. And uh, when we make shots and we can play with the ball movement that we did, uh, we can be pretty good that way. But really impressed with what we did defensively following a plan, switching, uh, making some adjustments on the fly, and I uh, thought our kids did a well of a job with that part of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess just in general, I think they're all doing great, um, to be honest with you. I mean, they're, they're so coachable. I mean, they, they just don't, they, they don't have negative reactions to coaching or constructive criticism or even when I get off. You know, they, they, they're here for a reason. They want to be good. You know, so um, I, I'm, I'm impressed with their demeanor that way. And I think what it's leading to is just some confident play. Our kids want to win. And they, they probably at times got caught clock watching, you know, and want that thing to run quicker than it was going to. And what we got to be able to do is just focus on playing the game. And then the rest. All right. We apologize for the technical difficulties with that package. But nevertheless, the women's team doing uh, pretty good so far this season. Guys, talk about the outlook, the remaining games here in calendar year 2019 and wrapping up the non-conference schedule. How important is that non-conference schedule? I think it's really big because some of the games you get, you know, they're against teams that are winnable, so it sees, you know, what things you can improve on, but still within a winnable game. And then others are a few harder teams on the schedule. As you can see here, we have Wisconsin, Lehigh, Butler notably coming up. Uh, so some, some bigger some bigger schools, you know, we can test where we are as a team, what our identity is so far, and then toward the end it gets uh, considerably a little bit easier. Um, still some tough challenges, but uh, just really throughout the year, or throughout the, uh, through the tail end, excuse me, of the uh, non-conference slate, you know, just really figuring out your identity of, you know, gelling together things you can, you know, get better at. And those two games against Lehigh and Wisconsin are uh, going to be in a neutral location in the Bahamas. So that's going to be interesting. This is two really, really good teams, and we'll be able to see exactly how good our team is going to be this year looking at it. Lehigh is 21-10 and 10 last year, and they're starting off pretty solid this year, so they should probably be a pretty formidable team. And as we know, Wisconsin is just a really good all-around sports team, and they get a lot of media coverage. So if we can beat one or both of these teams, we should be looking pretty good for the MAC schedule. Well, it should be fun to watch both basketball teams compete this season. Again, they have uh, games this weekend, the women's team playing Butler at 1 p.m. on Saturday, and the men's team play, taking on Howard at 3.30. All right, coming up after the break, we shift our focus to the football field. Only two games remain, and they need both of those uh, to keep the season alive. We'll explain why on the other side. You're watching Cardinal Sports Live. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. 
The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean. It just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. There's a lot Welcome of back to Cardinal Sports Live. Our final sport of the evening that we will be discussing is the football team. Ball State currently 4-6 and six on the season after losing a close game to Central Michigan 45-44. to Guys, what do the Cardinals need to do if they want to go bowling this year? Uh, first and foremost, stopping the run. We've been absolutely gashed the past three games, uh, running at least all three teams. Ohio, Western Michigan, and Central Michigan, excuse me, have all been over 100 yards with Western and Ohio both over 300 yards rushing. And then uh, we've also struggled uh, recently stopping the pass as well. I think the Antonio Phillips uh, ejection had a lot to do with that, your best corner being up, but we gave up 356 yards passing as well through their threats, uh, Central Michigan, and then uh, just cut down the penalties defensively. I completely agree. Uh, looking at the Kent State game in particular, we really need to stop the run as Kent State likes to run a running back committee. So they like to run like four or five of them. And also quarterback Dustin Crum likes to use his legs to get first downs and stuff. So if we can stop all the fresh legs from making an impact, we'll do great. Here's what Coach New and Drew Plitt had to say about the loss to Central Michigan. some of the penalties and lack of discipline, uh, and then we didn't get it done. And so when you have a lead like that at halftime, uh, when you're up 27 to 11, uh, everybody knows it's, it's you got to play a complete game. And so it's disappointing uh, not to deliver, not to uh, finish the deal. Um, but we didn't play well enough to win uh, in the second half. And um, you know, we had scored 34 second half points. Obviously, uh, felt like we did a lot of good things there at first half. But as we all know, that uh, you got to be able to finish the game, and we didn't do that. Um, you know, the three touchdowns doesn't really matter. We, we didn't come out with a win, and uh, that's kind of the mindset that I have is if we don't win, it doesn't really matter what happens, what the stats are. Um, I'm here to play to win, and that's all about, that's about it. Um, discipline killed us, and uh, I was a part of it, but moving on, we gotta, we got to go in, watch film tomorrow, and move on to the next game, move on to Kent State, and uh, just keep moving forward. Uh, you know, for us, all I can say is from an execution standpoint, offensively, we started to settle down, we started to execute, um, you know, we had good balance, we were mixing it up well. Joey did a good job mixing it up. And, uh, we were able to finish some drives, and so uh, defensively really uh, did a great job in the first half of, of uh, limiting them, keeping them, uh, keeping their running game kind of grounded, if you will, and uh, really did a good job. Guys, I want to touch on the reasons as to why the football team has lost six games this year. What's not working? Well, the big thing for me that's been standing out, if you want to win at football, you got to play the whole four quarters on both sides of the ball, and as of the last three games, we really haven't been doing that. There are times when the offense looks really great, and in the first half of that Central Michigan game, we forced three turnovers, but then in the second half, they kind of fell off and gave up some unnecessary penalties and kind of lost the game, quite frankly. So if we can play a really full game on both sides, like we did against the Toledo game, which is the last game that I can think of that we really did that, I think we could win these last two and hopefully pray for the scheduling committee to count that Fordham win good enough to get a bowl game. Yeah, I think uh, obviously to go off you, just to, you know, the whole season we haven't really played a complete game outside of Fordham and FCS team as well as Toledo. So I think if the offense and defense, com like, you know, together can put together a complete game four quarters, not just a half of play, as the defense said this past Saturday against Central, I think we should win these, pa uh, these past two games. Uh, Kentucky, or not Kentucky, excuse me, Kent State, Kent State. Kent State is a team that we've had their number the past few years, um, so I think that's a very winnable game. And then Miami of Ohio, um, they're pretty solid, but I think that's another winnable game. We've, we've been close to being in the past few years, and because our offense, I think if our defense especially plays a lot better, our, as I said earlier, our defense has given 100 rushing yards or more the past three games. Um, if they can play a little bit more to their potential and hold a team to possibly over under, excuse me, under 30 points, I think it'll be okay because their offense is starting to really gel, as you can see. Right, and that's kind of been the theme the whole season. These are winnable games that the Cardinals just can't find ways to win. The Cardinals will look to fix those mistakes and win the next two, hopefully, to become bowl eligible. 
Time for our last break of the night. On the other side, we will talk about Thanksgiving. That's right, a Thanksgiving special. Stay tuned right here to Cardinal Sports Live. supposed to save the whole world. You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports Live. It's time for overtime, but today we take a little bit of a different turn since uh, one week from today, we'll be stuffing our stomachs full of a variety of different foods on Thanksgiving Day. So I wanted to have kind of a little bit of a debate, if you will, on Thanksgiving, kind of a, a love-hate segment on what kind of food you guys like over Thanksgiving. So it's kind of a do you prefer, and we'll start out. So do you prefer on your Thanksgiving dinner turkey or ham? I'm going to say turkey, and here's why. When you think of Thanksgiving, yeah, you might think of ham. Ham is probably a little more Christmassy, but turkey, turkey, every, every every single thing you see for Thanksgiving is always turkey. Thanksgiving, there'll be an image of a turkey. Boom, turkey. It's well, better. I'll give you this: when prepared properly, turkey can be really good. But knowing uh, some people, they can't always get the turkey. They light the house on fire trying to cook the turkey. When's the last time you heard somebody light their house on fire trying to cook a ham? I've went several rounds last year with some ham on Thanksgiving, and I've got to declare it the winner. All right. I'm going to go with turkey. You know, you just, I, I just love me some turkey. It puts me right to sleep right during the football game. It's great. Stuffing or green beans? Mm. This one i got to go with green beans. Don't even get me started on stuffing. I like stuffing from time to time, especially with a little gravy on it. But i got to go with green beans. It's the staple. It's the classic. It's got to be the winner. I gotta go against you here. I gotta go with stuffing. Uh, I've had that. I was that was my childhood. Every year growing up, we would always have green beans, and I never, never could turn around to green beans. So stuffing is. All right, it's gonna be stuffing for me too. Not a big green bean fan, but that's okay. Mashed potatoes or corn casserole. Two very popular dishes that go well together. I think. Am I? I'm this, no food uh, critic here, but. This might be the first one that you've said that I've actually never had at Thanksgiving. I've never had corn casserole for Thanksgiving. So running away with the landslide's got to be the mashed potatoes. I'm actually going to have to agree with you on this one. I've never had that before. I've, I've always had mashed potatoes. So Never had corn yeah. casserole. Never, really never. Corn never. It's a staple. Nope. I love me some corn oh. casserole. All right, let's go, let's go with this one. Would you rather have cranberry sauce or apple sauce at Thanksgiving? It's kind of a debatable one. Mm. Mm. Applesauce, I have to say, applesauce without a doubt. Uh, I don't. I'm not a big of a sauce guy. I, I like both of them. I'll give cranberry sauce the edge. I gotta give cranberry sauce the edge. Just the the marshmallows on top, you know, it kind of kind of makes it all all well. All right, finally, dessert round. This is probably the most critical round ever. Pumpkin pie or apple pie. I hope we all agree here, or I don't know if I can be friends with you guys anymore, but I got to go with some pumpkin pie with some Cool Whip on top. Got to. Enough said. I second that, for sure. Definitely. It's got to be pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving, right? Apple pie is like maybe for, for Christmas Day or something. Apple pie something. is year-round. Yeah. Year-round. Okay, I'll give you that. Pumpkin pie kind of seasonal. You got to get that Cool Whip on top, or it's just not worth eating, right? Exactly. All right, that's all we have time for tonight on Cardinal Sports Live. Thanks for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Don't forget, you can find full episodes to watch anytime on our YouTube channel by searching Cardinal Sports Live. It's free, by the way. All you got to do is go to YouTube.com. All the episodes are there. Keep up with us on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BSU underscore CSL. For my analyst, Augie Weezy and Hunter Skillman, 
Come back next week in two weeks for another edition of Cardinal Sports Live. I'm your host, Grant Covey. Have a great night.